you have an amazing relationship. Focus internally. We gotta understand our fuzzies. Oh, he really cares about me. And then I natter. I need just a little bit of coffee. They're human. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's very strange. Happy birthday, Jack. What did I do? So in this episode, I'm gonna break down how to get clients to love you. There, there's one thing, right? There's, there's something that a therapist told me and it stuck with me for the majority, well, for, for a long period of time. And that's if you have a relationship that either needs to be repaired or is being created and you want to nurture growth and to create a really solid relationship, you have two parties. Both parties need to be open to the relationship being repaired or for it to grow. If you have one side that's like closed off and the other side that's open and wants the relationship to happen, it won't work and vice versa won't work. But if you have both sides, then they connect and everything, you have an amazing relationship essentially. And for me, honestly, it's the exact same thing when it comes to agency or client relationships. There's no difference. They're the exact same thing, whether it's a relationship that you're growing personally or if it's a client service relationship, because we're all, one second. We're all these guys. We're all, hold on, let me see if this focuses. We're all little humans. This actually, this even says, look, it says like uh, Kenny and seven on the back. Seven is my favorite number and mini corp on the front. It's really cool. But essentially we're these, we're all little humans and little humans love relationships and relationships need work and nurturing and love and care and attention and all of the things. So in this episode, I'm gonna break down all of the different aspects of how I grow and nurture client relationships and how to get clients to love you. Let's talk about step one, which is understanding thyself or understanding you as an agency, which I think a lot of people fail at. They go straight to let's get into sales and let's find clients that work really well for me and how do I sign people and get all of that. Instead, focus internally and try to figure out what does an absolutely exceptional client look like to you? What do they value? What do they, what are they trying to achieve? What does their product look like? What does a working relationship look like? How many times are you meeting each other? What does your future look like? And just like in any relationship or all relationships, I think the majority of humans try to forecast into the future what their relationship might look like. And you should do the same. And write all of these things down. Write down exactly what the most amazing client looks like to you. Write down all of the attributes. For instance, things that we care about in Minicorp for clients, as in what we quantify as an A++ client, uh, there's attributes like they've worked with an agency before, they have the capital and time available in order to dedicate to this product so that we can give it the biggest possibility or the biggest uh, probability of being successful. We have all of these different metrics that we use in order to figure out whether the client is the right client for us because we got to understand our fuzzies as to what we want out of a relationship before we can start to ask the client what they want out of a relationship. Okay, so once... I thought someone was coming in the door. It'd be really weird for me to be on the ground if somebody's coming in the door. Let's open this up again. Once you have a really good understanding of what you want to accomplish from the relationship and what you're looking for from a client, it's now time to determine the other side of this, which is what does the client want from the relationship and how do we make sure that we're getting the... <clears throat> so what I tend to do here is meet with the client a lot. And by a lot, I mean like maybe three, four or five times and I'll sit down with them, I'll grab coffees with them, I'll ask them really random and weird questions about how they see the world or what does success look like for them. 
If they had 5 million euros, what would they do with it? Just all of these things in order to pick apart their emotional understanding and how they see the world and what they value. And all of these kind of tells that I have now crafted different questions around in order to uncover what the client actually really is trying to get out of this relationship and what success looks like to them. So once you know that, you know, person number one, which is us, and person number two are a good match, and like the whole Tinder thing, it's a match, woo! The next thing is, what do we want to do together? And not that, but like, what do we want to build or what do we want to create or what do we want to craft? And defining what that is, is really important. That's where the communication, understanding, expectation all gets derived from. Both parties know what we're trying to achieve and we've laid it all out and the expectations are set and the only thing to do next is really to make it happen. <laughs> do it! Just do it! But hold on. I have to make room on my desk. This, this is the Logi MX keys for Mac. It is the best keyboard that I've ever purchased. Highly recommend. I don't have a hashtag influencer coat. Okay, so now we've got a relationship. We're in a relationship. Hashtag update your Facebook. I don't think people update their Facebook anymore, but let's say we now have a relationship. We've kind of set the scope of what we're trying to build or achieve and the expectations are there. Everything is there. Fantastic. The next thing is really to think about it again like a relationship. You want to do small little nuggets of, oh, he really cares about me. And these come in so many different ways. It's first of all, how you speak about the relationship. When you're on client one-on-one -on -one calls, you want to convey a message of, I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about this project and here's other things that have come to mind and here's some more extra research that I've done. You wanna do other things like um, showcase little pieces of value by adding in extra pieces to the contract or to the build. So we design and build digital applications and kind of build them and grow them. So for us, it's things like beautiful animations or extra pages or or we've thought about things two or three steps into the future and we've built in these small little features that when the client sees them they go oh you really care and we do really care but there's no point in really caring and just keeping it all internal you need to articulate how you care and show in small little pieces how you care and those things they all start to stack and add up to the point that the client then turns around and they're like this is a really good relationship also, this is how I plan out YouTube videos. So all, all I've done for this video is how to get a client to love you, build a relationship, think through like few little small points, that's all. And then I natter at the camera and hopefully the quality is good. I need just a little bit of coffee. What tends to happen with these things is that I'll go and buy a coffee because I'm gonna go and record a video, but then I'm running around recording the video and my coffee goes, you know. We've got a relationship. It's growing. It's blooming like a flower. Client loves us. We love the client. What's next? Let me tell you about a little story. We had a client, God, it must be two, three, maybe four years ago, a long time ago. And this client, at the very beginning, it felt like a lovely relationship. We were getting on well. It was two co-founders. They knew each other, I don't know how, but they essentially had a pre-built relationship and had a friendship for many years. They came to us in order to do this strategy and discovery. This is where we listen to their idea. We listen to what they're trying to build. We listen to the expectation. We're trying to figure out by way of engineering and technology what's possible and what's not. And we're setting expectations. We went off and we created the strategy and designed all of these beautiful screens for this app. They just exploded. They're like, this is not what we wanted. This is not what we thought. It's like all of a sudden their entire opinion and viewpoint on what we're doing and how we're building it just did a complete 180 and it's very, Strange, <laughs> to say the least. But I'll never forget, like I was over that way in St. Stephen's Green here in Dublin, and I was on a phone call with them for about two hours, just like walking around the park. And I was trying to understand what had gone wrong or 
what, what did I do? You know, like what was the problem? We kind of slowly started to discover that these two ladies were having, you know, some, some internal co-founder issues and those kind of overspilled into expectation and the company was kind of internally breaking down and that kind of, a lot of it got, anyway, it's, it's just to really point out that even though you can do all of this preliminary work and get to know the client really well and get to know the product really well and get to set the expectations really well, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's always gonna work. You kind of, a relationship is not stuck in time. You gotta continually build on it and you gotta continually try to do the best you can. It evolves, it changes, people change. Even though it's like this right now, it may become like this and you're not, you know, things will break down at some point. Hopefully they don't, <laughs> but anyway. It's just, you know, be careful. I kind of I kind of wish that I had not just one but two of these so that we could do the whole relationship thing, but just imagine that like this. Anyway. The last point on this in, in endeavor about how to get clients to love you is that it's really all about relationships and a relationship, as you can imagine, so much of it is about consistency. It's about showing up, it's about caring, it's about showing that you care and it's about consistently doing so. It's never just paused in time. Little things that we do in Minicorp in order to keep our clients as connected to us as possible is having really open and solid communication all the time. It's showing them through little small features or things that we do that we really care and it's making sure that when we're adding something to the relationship or when we're building something or designing something we're doing it with the most amount of passion and intent and kind of bringing our best not to sound too woo wooey but like bringing our best selves to the project and to the product and what that means is that let's say this is getting really weird. <laughs> well, let's, let's say the product is the baby. The baby is getting the most amount of love and attention from not just this side, but also from this side. And, you know, they can prosper and grow in, in a loving kind of nurtured environment. The parents, the parents are showing up, which is always good. And honestly, after doing, must be, I don't know how many products, it's in, it must be 70 plus products at this stage. The ones that win and the ones that succeed, bar market dynamics of things changing, are the ones where the biggest amount of intent from both parties as to how they show up and how they care about the product is really, really high. So yeah, that's that. Also, this is Jack's desk. This is Jack's desk. See, Jack's desk has the best lighting in the office. So sometimes I use it for the, the vlogs and videos. But it was Jack's birthday last Thursday and he's coming back soon. So he's coming back before this video goes out, put it that way. And he's a big, he's a big Mercedes guy. We're like really crazy into our Formula One here. Like a darked out version, so slick. Happy birthday, Jack. Relationships are hard. Like, I think we all know and appreciate that, but it's also, when you get a great relationship, I think one of the biggest and strongest things that I've ever seen is when you have like a really solid team that all intimately care about one thing that you're all building together. And then when you build that thing, it like goes up and just, it becomes a rocket ship. So exciting and so exhilarating. So. I highly encourage you to build exceptional, great, strong, growing relationships with your clients. I detest when all this stuff comes online where it's like, ooh, clients, when clients ask for this or when clients ask for that and clients are so silly. Clients aren't, like clients are just a name, they're a brand, they're, uh, they're human, <laughs> you know what I mean? They want something and you want something and so you're coming together in order to make that thing happen. Clients are no different than anybody. They're just, it's, it's a terminology. So make sure that you build great relationships because when you do, I promise you on the other side of that is just so much awesomeness. Appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I hope you're always growing onwards and upwards, my friends, and holla at your boy if you have any questions at all. Really appreciate all of the people who reach out and give some feedback and comment and subscribe and do all the bits. Thank you. See y'all in the next one. Have a great one.